Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, my dear viewer. My name is Julian Cruiser here with NodesAren'tScary.com, and I will do pretty much anything to avoid doing manual roto, which is why I was super pumped when the Foundry released the Cattery. Now, the Cattery is a selection of uh, research papers that were ported to Nuke's inbuilt machine learning tool called Copycat. And the one that I was particularly interested in was ModNet. Now, what ModNet does is it accepts an input of an image with a person in it and it outputs the mat of the person and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing i looked at the video look check this out we get just a mat it, it's like amazing i'm never gonna have to do roto again this is beautiful and then i downloaded it and i brought it into nuke and i applied it to my own footage and i got this this looks like garbage I was like, oh my gosh, dude, I got my hopes up for nothing. They must have like cherry picked examples for the website and it's never gonna be usable in production, right? Wrong. In this video, I want to show you how to go from an output that looks like this to a mat that looks like this using ModNet. Look at how much we can clean it up. This is an actual usable mat that we're gonna get out of ModNet and I, I'm now going to show you how to achieve this. Let's jump right in. What I have here is a piece of test footage. Um, this is me walking down the street from a couple years ago, and I want to isolate a mat. So we're gonna use ModNet, and the thing to know about ModNet is that it's very sensitive and um, also a little buggy. So there are some tips and tricks that we have to use in order to get it to work at all. We'll run into the first issue when we try and actually just bring ModNet in. Um, we immediately just get an error. This, this is a bug, and I think it has to do with the ACES color space. Um, ACES is super common, I don't know why this is a problem, but the way to fix this bug to get no error message here is to hit S, go to your project settings, then under color, OCIO config, just switch it to something else and then switch it back to whatever it was on before, and then it works. I don't know why this fixes it, but it does just roll with it. So now we've got an output from ModNet, and it still looks terrible. Why does it look terrible? The main reason is that ModNet expects a certain image as an input in order to give a good output. It was trained on certain images to produce a good output, and when we don't give it something that's similar enough to that, it freaks out. So what doesn't it like about our input image? Well, the main thing is that it doesn't like RGB values over one. And if we look at the sky, our blue channel is at 14, and our green channel is at 18, and this is absolutely, you know, ModNet is puking and throwing up and like it, it freaking out because of these values. So that's why we're getting all this nasty haze up here uh, and all these artifacts. To fix this, all we have to do is put a clamp before it. Look at how much it cleans up. It's amazing. Like just before and after here, this is helping so much stuff. It's fixing stuff down here that doesn't even have to, the clamp isn't even affecting this part of the image, but it's fixing stuff down there. And so <clears throat> it's all about giving ModNet what it wants. We can modify the source image as much as we want to get it so that ModNet likes it and outputs a good image. And so I'll show you um, some other things, some other ways that you can modify your input image that I have found through my own experimentation, I've found to be things that ModNet likes. So one thing that you should always be doing anyway, if you're gonna be doing any processing on an image is denoising it. Please do this. Um, just in any case, good thing to do, and it does help sometimes with ModNet. Uh, here it's actually making it worse, but we can adjust the settings, the smoothness, the luminance, blend, to get a decent setting. And this is going to be a theme with the tweaks that we make, is that you kind of have to just adjust the settings and look at the output to see what ModNet likes and doesn't like. But th this is around the settings that, are, that I found work with this particular shot. We've still got a big nasty area here that shouldn't be here. So let's see if there's anything else that we can do to our input image to make ModNet like it better. One thing that I found is a sharpen. It loves sharper images because it creates more contrast between our subject and our background. You can see the difference that that makes. Um, for this particular video, I found that it likes a little bit more size, up towards 5, and then a little more amount. As always, experiment on your own shot. It's going to be different 
can't really just copy the same values that I use, but for this, these settings work. I also found grading the image helps. Now this is just, I'm just gonna adjust the gain here and you can see what this does. Too much is bad, we get this happening. Too low is terrible, we get lose the whole character, this is a disaster, but some, somewhere in here, there is an improvement to be made. And I think about this much is good. We're getting a little bit more of the, uh, oh, no, that shouldn't be there at all. All right, forget that. We're not doing the grade. You got to do whatever works. And there's infinite ways to modify the input image. You could use a hue correct. You could use, um, you could use a hue shift. You could use... Uh, sharpening or blurring or whatever. It's experimentation. I've found that for this particular shot and other ones too, sharpening works, clamping works, always clamp it. And denoising can help too. And so let's look at the image that we have now. Already you can see it's a big improvement from what we had before. If we look at what we had before, it's like this, and then now we have this. It's much better, but there's still some issues. I'm going to set up a little um, node tree here so that we can preview what our output is actually going to look like as a mat. So now we can see. So let's take a look at the problem areas that we still have. What I'm noticing here is that we have a, we're getting a ton of flickering on the arm and the elbow here, and we're also getting this area between the torso and the arm is getting filled in with um, and it's letting the background through. So let's see what we can do to fix this. Up until now, what we've been doing is modifying the whole source image before we feed it into ModNet, but there's a little, a, a big brain move we can do here. We don't have to modify the whole image. This is one of the secrets here. We can just modify part of it. Like I said before, ModNet likes contrast between the foreground and the background, and there's not enough contrast here between the arm and um, the road in order for it to see that this should not be part of the mat. So what we can do here is actually pull a key on the road and then grade it differently. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do a tutorial, a uh, different tutorial video on how to use HSV tool someday because it's an awesome tool. My favorite, one of my favorite keyers. Um, but I'm just gonna pull a quick mat on the road here. Like this, like this and grade it so that we have a solid mat. Now, what I'm gonna do is pop in a grade node here and use that key that we pulled on the road as a mask. And now I can just increase the brightness of the road like this. And you'll see, if we look at the output, pay attention to this area over here, increase the gain, it's fixed. It's so much better. We get better contrast between the road and the character, and our mat cleans right up. It's awesome. So we can also use a roto as the mask for a grade node. Let's take a look at the hair up here. You can see that some of the sky is bleeding in. And I'm going to take a grade here, and then just take a roto, use it as the mask, and I'm going to draw a shape around the top of the frame. So now I can just adjust this uh, input for the top of the head here. I want to increase the gain. And then boom, um, we are getting a lot better mat here. And maybe if I adjust the gamma some, we can get some of the, yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's an improvement. And you notice that we aren't affecting the rest of the image. If I disabled the, um, the roto, I guess we're actually also helping down here. Maybe I should do this for the whole image, but uh, there's gonna be situations where you, want to only adjust part of the input image to get a better output. And that's what we're doing here. So you'll notice here that we're still having a big problem with our mat here. And this is the flickering of the elbow. There's a lot of flickering and flickering is the biggest problem that you're going to see with ModNet and other copycat tools. Uh, and there is a way around this. And this is where we move from messing with the input uh, of the mod net to the output. So the technique that I use is averaging. The idea of this technique is that if we have a mod net that flickers like this, what we can do is get another one. 
another mod net and do the little dance and then it works and once we have two mod nets what we want to do is make them flicker at different times so what we can in order to accomplish this what we can do is actually just transform the input so what i'm going to do is slide over on the x-axis and you can see how much this elbow area is changing i'm going to slide it over here this looks good 78 pixels and then I'm going to duplicate the transform and then invert it so that we're putting it back in its original place after the mod net is done. You can see now that we have now we have two different outputs that are going to be flickering at different times. And this actually does work better if you do um, three or four mod nets. Okay, so what I've done here is set up four different mod nets with four different transforms, and they're all producing different outputs, flickering at different times. And what we can do here is find out what pixels they agree on and discard the garbage. So all we have to do in order to accomplish this is merge together the outputs from all four of our mod nets here. And then we can use an average. And the way that this works is that any pixels that are below around um, 0.7 RGB or red are gonna be pixels that not all of the mod nets agree on. So we can just grade out our problems like this, if I do this and then bring up the black point, we get rid of problem areas. And now you can see it's gonna, well, it's gonna take a lot longer for our thing to render because we're using four times as many um, mod nets. But look at this, yeah, see this kind of thing? We can just grade out big things, big errors like that. So now what we're getting is a new issue and we're getting sort of single, single frame dropouts like this. I guess they're sort of multiple frame, but dropouts like that. And we can sort of try and grade those back in a little bit, bring this down. Um, but there's still gonna be holes that show up in the mat and we get stuff like this. Get that out of here. So how can we fix this? Have I got a method for you? Introducing the temporal median node. What the temporal median node does is it looks at three frames. It looks at the previous frame, the current frame, and the frame after the current frame. And it will go over each pixel and it'll look for things like this. It'll look at this pixel here. It'll say on the current frame, it's black. On the frame before, it's red. On the frame after, it's red. And then what it does is it puts these values in order. It sorts them by value. So 0, 1, 1. And then it picks the middle value. And this is awesome because it gets rid of the spots like this. It just takes them out. You saw that. It just makes them disappear. And it still preserves the outside edge. It isn't like doing a time echo or anything. It's actually very good. So yeah, temporal medians are good at removing single frame holes like that. However, there is a trade-off and that is that they introduce artifacts as well. If we take a look over here on frame 85 and I enable the temporal median, it introduces a shape here under the arm that isn't supposed to be there. If we look at our uh, pre-multiplied version, it's a piece of the road. And uh, the reason that it's doing this is because like I said, it's looking at three frames for single frame holes. And over the course of three frames, <laughs> we're going red, black, red, because the body is moving. It's not like a, a flicker like we've been experiencing before. It's just the body moving. But the temporal median doesn't know the difference. And so it fills it in with a triangle like this. And uh, it looks bad. So there's a trade-off. You have to figure out when to use it. And there is a way to fix this technically but it is pretty bad it's pretty disastrous it crashes the program sometimes it might start your computer on fire and if you really want to know about it you can leave a comment below and i might make another video on it but um, while we're on the subject of temporal medians here i do want to say that it when it really kicks butt is when the subject is standing still because that way it also cleans up the chatter on the edges i'll show you over here here is another mat where i'm standing still and you'll notice your eyes are immediately drawn to this fast chattering around the edges. And what one temporal medium will do to that, it immediately reduces the frequency of the chatter. 
can see it's already smoother, but there's still some fast chatter happening down here, like, ah, there. And this is where stacking the temporal medians comes in, because you can do this, I have five of them stacked up here, all processing just the red channel with the core turned all the way up. You have to turn the core up or else um, it barely does anything. So if you have that, if you look at our result here, the more of them you stack, obviously the more time it's going to take to process, but also the smoother it gets. The edge gets smoother. Now you can see all that fast stuff down there is gone. It's real smooth. And even though the mat is terribly inaccurate, like if I look at our pre-multiplied version here, we have, we're seeing the background between my body and my arm here, and we're seeing it over here, but it doesn't matter. Your eyes, your eyes don't pay attention to that because it's not flickering. If we look at our version without any temporal medians, you immediately notice those spots because they're dancing all over the place and they're catching your eye. But with these temporal medians, reducing that chatter, you barely notice it, even though it's incorrect. So this is the importance. Anyway, I digress. So to wrap things up, there are a couple finishing touches we can put on our mat here. One of them is just blurring the edge a little bit to soften it up a little bit. Um, we're getting a little bit of the background bleeding in, so what we can do is use an erode to push that back a little bit. And we're still getting some up here around the ear, and we can hide this with an edge extend. Source is pre-multiplied, and that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our finished mat and then compare it to what we started with. So here's our finished mat. And then if you recall, this is what we started with. Look at all this. Can you believe how far we have come? How much we have learned? Look at that. And of course, this mat isn't perfect either. There's still stuff that we could fix over here somewhere. Yep, there is an issue with the ear. Um, but we can fix this using techniques that we learned already. We could probably put a roto over here and grade the input plate and ModNet would be like, oh yeah, I get what you're talking about. I'll, I won't include that in the mat. Let's take a moment to recap everything that we've learned. Mainly we've learned that ModNet is a pretty touchy piece of software, but we have learned how to more or less give it what it wants. We learned about denoising the plate, clamping the plate, very important, sharpening the plate, good stuff, grading it to get into a, uh, a good spot, you know, not too dark, not too bright enough, gamma, all of that stuff. And then we learned about how to spot correct uh, to give ModNet hints. That was uh, the little corrections we made here with the road, with the key, with the uh, little hint with the planar track here on the elbow, with the, um, with the grade we did on the sky to improve the hair mat, all of that stuff. And then, of course, we also learned about how to use multiple ModNets in parallel to sort of cancel out the noise from each other, averaging them together using the grade, and we learned something about temporal medians and how they can be used for removing single frame holes as well as chatter, and also the importance of removing chatter. Your eye catches it, right? So, this has been a big long video. Um, if you do want that video on how to reduce chatter on moving subjects and get rid of those artifacts that we were talking about with the temporal median, leave a comment below and I might just make it happen. Until then, I want to say thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something, and if you didn't, I hope you at least had a good time. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, or a subscription. I would appreciate any of them. I'm just glad you're here. My name is Julian Cruiser here with NodesAren'tScary.com, and I will see you in the next one.